Hi everyone, today I'm going to discuss a question that comes up again and again and again, and that, which is better, GraphQL or a BFF? Or which one should I use? Should I use a GraphQL or should I use a BFF? And this question comes up when people start moving towards a Mac-based architecture or in the process of designing, say, a Mac architecture or they've just gone headless and they're looking at a new architectural blueprint or they're trying to make some decisions on the overall architecture. And as you might have guessed, the answer isn't that simple. Hopefully after watching this video, you'll understand the differences between a BFF and GraphQL and you can make the right choice for your architecture. So let's waste no more time, let's get to it. I already covered in detail what a BFF is in a previous video. If you haven't watched this video or you don't understand what a BFF is, I'd recommend that you watch that video. And I'll leave a link to that video in the corner just up here. But for now, I'm gonna summarize what a BFF is. A BFF is a custom API that sits on top of your microservices for a specific front end. In this pattern, instead of the front end application having to call all the various microservices, it just calls the BFF instead. Usually the team that builds the front end also owns the BFF. This gives the teams far more autonomy to optimize the communications between their front end application and the microservices layer. For instance, they could group together several API requests into one single BFF call, thereby reducing the underfetching problem. And this autonomy also gives front-end developers far more flexibility. For instance, they can add business logic, which previously they would have had to embed right into their front-end application. A good example of this is to look up a segment, say, in one microservice, and then use that segment to filter data that's returned from a different microservice. And that would then allow you to personalize the UI. When it comes to GraphQL, I covered it in a lot more detail in my video, What is GraphQL? And I'll leave the link in the corner. If you've not seen that video or you don't know what GraphQL is, I'd recommend watching that. But for now, I'm gonna give you a super quick summary of what GraphQL is. GraphQL is a new way for systems to talk to each other whether that's the front end to the back end or even a back end to a back end. GraphQL is a new protocol and acts as a query language for your APIs and your microservices. GraphQL has some great tools and some great features to optimize communications, such as removing underfetching and overfetching. If you really want to understand the communication problems that GraphQL solves, I'd recommend watching my other video, GraphQL versus REST and I'll leave the link for you in the corner as well. So before we discuss whether to use a BFF over GraphQL, let's take a look at how they fit into a Mac architecture. And we'll walk through this slowly. First of all, we have our general purpose API, composed of all the microservices that the front-end application needs. And these APIs are built using REST and suffer from issues like underfetching and overfetching. Now let's add a BFF for each of the front-end applications. These sit between the front-end and the back-end services, and they provide a dedicated, tailored API for each of the front-end apps. Now when it comes to GraphQL, you can place it as a single layer between all of your front-end applications and all of your back-end microservices. And this provides an optimized and flexible general purpose API. And that's not all. Before we move on, there is a further option. We could in fact combine the BFF with the GraphQL protocol. Basically, we could build a BFF and use GraphQL as its interface instead of REST, giving the BFF all the advantages of GraphQL. This means that the real question is not if a BFF is better than GraphQL or whether you should only use a BFF or only use GraphQL. It's actually more about what is the right architectural pattern that you need for your system. And to answer this question, you can break it down into smaller questions, such as do you just need to optimize communications? Because if that's all you need, then GraphQL does a superb job of optimizing communication and removing underfetching and overfetching. Do you need a general purpose API or a specific API? 
If you need the freedom to diverge from the general purpose ABI, maybe to add more business logic, or you need to add more sophisticated formatting that's going to be passed into systems such as voice applications, then maybe the BFF is the right choice for you. Although a BFF does give your front-end app development team more autonomy, thereby giving it more agility and more flexibility, it does come with an overhead and a cost to managing the application. So if you go down that route, you should really understand, are the costs worth it? And if you're going to build a BFF, it's also worth thinking about using GraphQL because you will get a lot of stuff for free. You'll get the communication optimizations and a lot more flexibility out of the box. So what are the pros and cons to GraphQL and BFFs? If you do decide to build a BFF, whether it's in REST or GraphQL, you will optimize the communications between the app and the backend services. This approach can improve agility because your front-end teams can work independently to your back-end services teams. It also simplifies your app code base and it now can be focused on the UI and the customer experience. However, there are downsides to the BFF pattern. Each BFF requires its own investment and ongoing maintenance. You really need to decide whether that extra cost and extra effort is worth it or whether it's just better to go down a GraphQL route. Another big consideration is if the BFF goes down, it may bring down your whole application. Whereas if a single microservice goes down in a general purpose API, it may only impact only part of your application. Another consideration about building a BFF is that one call to the BFF may result in many calls to your microservices. So you just need to think about how you'll deal with that. The great thing about using GraphQL as a general purpose API means that you improve the communications between all of your front-end applications and their back-end services. You gain agility with GraphQL as you can build new experiences and new applications without having to build a new BFF. Another fantastic benefit of using GraphQL as a general purpose API is it gives you the ability to slice and dice your APIs and data in new ways without having to build a new backend. But despite all of this, there are still things you need to consider. One call to GraphQL could result in calling hundreds of its resolvers, and that means hundreds of API calls under the hood. This could hurt the scaling and performance of your GraphQL API and even your application. And because of this fan out issue, rate limiting could also be a problem. In this instance, rate limiting is replaced with something called complexity scoring. And how this works is that each request in GraphQL is given a complexity score. And GraphQL will limit requests based on that score. So this means that developers have to code defensively to deal with this situation. Caching could also be an issue as CDNs tend to cache individual resources, such as a URL for a website or even a URL for a microservice. Whereas GraphQL requests may span many different resources in a single query. So what we've learned is that BFFs and GraphQL are not just different types of technology, but different architectural approaches. Both BFFs and GraphQL can optimize the communications between your front-end applications and your back-end services. Both BFFs and GraphQL can give your teams more agility. And both technologies give you far more flexibility in your development approach. But the decision of which architectural approach to use is really down to your own situation. If you enjoyed the architectural discussions in this video, I recommend watching this video next. But before you go, don't forget to press the like button and show your appreciation by subscribing. But for now, it's time to say thank you, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.